sales professional and currently works as management consultant. He has developed a recent interest in Greek culture and philosophy of existentialism. That's interesting. Yeah. He likes traveling, camping, trekking, and nature in general. And he'll be talking about how to earn more money in 2018. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to be richer in 2018? <laughs> Who wants to get paid more? Okay. <laughs> then I will tell you possibly the simplest way of earning more money in 2018. But don't worry, I will not talk about post psychology. I will not talk about bitcoins or I will not talk about a Ponzi scheme, which I have learned about. But what I will talk about today is our own reality, the corporate. Uh, our culture in the corporate world. But before moving on my speech and giving you the magical formula, let me ask you one last question. How much is your salary? How much is your salary? I know asking this question is very rude and nobody will answer to my question because the common wisdom about how much we make in a month is it's very personal. It's between us and our employers, and of course the HR guys. But um, the amount of money we earn in a month is about our expertise. It's about our seniority in the company. It's um, it's about our social importance, and that's why we do not talk about our salaries because. Talking about it may lead to jealousy. It may lead to conflicts, problems, fights. But is it really that dangerous to talk about our salary information? Will it, uh, especially with our colleagues, will it hurt us? Will it hurt our colleagues, or will it hurt somebody else? What if we talk about our salary information with someone? especially someone in our office, publicly. Let me tell you what happens. Two months ago, I recruited a very well experienced sales professional for one of my client companies, and we offered her a very competitive salary, and she was happy with that. She accepted our offer, and last week, it turned out that she shared that very personal information to one of her teammates. And these teammates who learned that he was underpaid decided to talk to his manager, not surprisingly, and even talk to the CEO of the company. And then when I, um, they told me about the situation, and when I first uh, hear the situation, the first thing I thought was, how could, how could she do that? Wasn't she professional enough to say this information for herself? Or didn't she know the first rule of the office? You do not talk about your salary. And I continued thinking about the possible scenarios about the guy, not the woman. The best case scenario was the company will give him the raise he wanted immediately, and they will move along happily ever after. The worst case scenario is the company will not give him the raise he wanted, and then he will get demotivated, he will look for other opportunities, and then he will leave the company when he finds a better deal. But as the most common scenario, the company will talk to him about his progress, his uh, performance, and their future plans around him, and some other bullshit, and he will get the raise eventually, in a couple of months, probably. And that's what my client will do, actually. So, in all of the possible scenarios, we see that um, it is working for the, uh, it is good for the employee, and it is not good for the company. In other words, pay secrecy is working for the employers, not for the employees. <coughs> Let's move on to another case. What if we talk about our salary information, not only with our colleagues, but also with other professionals from 
other companies doing the same job in our industry. The odds will be the same. You know the possible scenarios. Probably, um, it's a mathematical fact, by the way, some of the employees in one specific company will see that they are being underpaid below than the industry average, and they will ask for a raise, at least for the industry average, and then they will get the raise. Does anyone remember who, what has happened in Bursa last year? Well, Renault workers learned that Bosch Siemens workers got better terms in their collective labor agreement. They started to, they decided to talk to the management and ask for a raise, ask for the same terms in their yearly agreements. And then fiat workers learned about the situation and then they got in. And Archelic workers learned about the situation and then they got in. And finally, all of the workers in metal industry got far better deals than they would get in the first place. And they call it metal store in Bursa. So I'm not talking about only blue color workers. I'm talking about white colors. I'm talking about us. And we can see that pay secrecy is a great way of saving money. But on the other hand, pay transparency is the easiest way to learn about whether we are being treated fairly or not, or whether there is a pay gap between genders, between ages, between some ordinary people, some uh, ordinary people and the relatives of the bosses. And with pay uh, transparency, we can, um, with pay transparency, managers and bosses will be, may, maybe, will be more accountable, more fair, more, um, while making their salary policies. So we can say that we are not interested in what our uh, neighbors in the next cubicle earns. We can be okay with our income, but if you want to be earning more money in 2018, in my humble opinion, the easiest way to do it is talk about your salary. I wish you a uh, <laughs>